Hi folks, so OS command injection vulnerabilities is a kind of uh, structured output um, generation vulnerability where you basically you've got some program that is generating a command that gets sent to on like on Linux like Bash for example or on Windows like PowerShell and you're not being careful enough with all of the inputs that have come from a user and you um, basically end up with an injection attack possible where an attacker is able to put something into the input that then gets executed by the shell uh, and that can you know be uh, a big security problem so let's just um, you know jump in have a look at two examples of this one of uh, being uh, in some C code and one being on a website so if we have a look here, um, we can see we've got our program. Um, it's pretty straightforward. We've got our main function where the code starts ru um, running. Uh, we've got a name variable that has 20 characters. We've got a command um, variable. It asks them for their name. It stores it in their name. It, um, tries to avoid a buffer overflow by making sure that they don't put in more input than what can be stored there. Uh, it won't it'll let them basically put in anything that's not a new line character uh, and it will store it into the, that name variable. Uh, it then generates a new string into command that is based on this input. So it'll basically generate a string that will say hello uh, echo hello and then it will take what they've put as their name and put it here. So it'll end up being echo, hello, such and such, uh, semicolon. So that means that there's a new command, um, echo the time is currently, uh, and then semicolon, so a new command, and then runs the date command. So all this stuff gets sent through to bash, and bash will basically output this stuff and run this command. Um, so this is where it gets sent through to bash. So system and then the command. So if we want to, um, well, let's first see it uh, working correctly. So we can, um, because it's C code, we have to compile it before we can run it. Um, so take that code and um, generate an executable that we can run. And then we can run that, that program and ask for a name, and if I put my name in, um, it works as expected. Um, right, so let's um, jump back to some slides and have a look. So what it does is it's it's generating the output. Um, so that echo hello percent %s can actually become anything based on what the user puts in. So if the user actually enters in a semicolon, that will be part of that command that's created. That's obviously a big security problem. Um, and so we can have a look at that. If we run it, and instead of entering in my name, I put in semicolon cat etc password, uh, then the string that gets generated, instead of it being echo, hello, uh, you know, clip, semicolon, echo something else out, it becomes Echo, oh, okay, I've finished echoing, now do this. And so then it executes that command when it gets sent through to bash. So you know, the sorts of things that you can um, try and do to find these vulnerabilities is to insert things like a semicolon, which in bash uh, is like a new command, so at the end of that command, start a new one. Um, you can do a dollar and then brackets, which um, basically is another way of running a command. You can use backticks, which is yet another way of running a command in bash. Uh, and you can you know, try like escaping quotes and things um, if you need to, to uh, in order to be able to do, you know, to um, get to the point where you can inject your code. So also in Unix, file names can contain all kinds of special characters. So you can put, um, you know, things like semicolons in a file name. Um, and if that ends up being in, used by the program that you provide the file to, um, and the program is not careful, uh, then again, you can, um, it's one way that you could trigger operating system commands. 
So let's have a look at another example of that, um, but this time on a website. So just refresh this page. So here we've got a um, command injection. Uh, so this is on Dan Vulnerable Web App. Uh, it's written in PHP, and that's quite nice because it can show us the source code. Uh, and so we can do something like, okay, what it's expecting is a host name. And when you give it a host name, what it does is it pings that host name and it gives you the ping times. Um, the way it does that, we could guess and we can look at the source code for it, is that it basically just runs the ping command on the system um, concatenated with the target that we provided. So it's running it in the shell. So again, if we do these things to try and get it to send more commands through to the shell, so instead of just sending localhost, we could do localhost and then, or we could, we don't even have to put localhost, but if we wanted to, we could provide what it was expecting and then something like tell it to print out the password file, which contains a list of uh, user accounts. So, you know, in this case, it's going to ping localhost, which it does, and then it goes and lists the contents of this file. Um, so, that you know that is um, in the first example when we're looking at C, that would be a huge security problem if there's were trust where if that C code was tr um, crossing a threat boundary. So for example, it was running on a remote server and we were able to interact with it some way, or if it was like running a set UID, basically as some kind of elevated privilege thing on the same computer, and we're able to um, interact with it. In this example, it's clearly a big problem because we're on a website. So we're able to inject code onto that potentially remote server. Um, in this case, this, the Dan Brunner Web App happens to be running on this machine. But of course, on a website, it could be running on a remote um, server. And if we're able to um, do a command injection, then we're able to run commands on that remote server. Um, and that is basically one of the things that an attacker is aiming for, isn't it? So um, because once you can run commands, you can basically take control of that um, system to whatever level that user that's running those commands on the server uh, is running as.